Hi everyone, in my last set of videos I talked about uh, S-shaped growth and what causes it and uh, how to uh, model it in Excel. And what I wanted to do this time is talk about what you can do about it as a business leader. So if you recall, S-shaped growth, really, growth is really driven by two loops. One is a reinforcing loop, so you get a product out there, you get good reference sites and the word of mouth drives desire for your product on other customers and they become your customers and you have this kind of reinforcing you know, spiral when your product is taking off. But then what happens is you run into market saturation. So your total available customers may be fixed and, um, and the more customers you sell, the less available customers you have. And so eventually your growth kind of flattens out. And, so, and it looks like an S. So here's the S-shaped growth where in the beginning that word of mouth is driving the high growth and then uh, the other loop takes over and it slows down the growth because you have less and less customers to sell it to. So the question that we're asking today is what should you do about it? Uh, because this is not ideal. This slowing growth is not ideal. This taking so long to recoup your R&D investment is not ideal. So is there a way to sort of get the growth going faster and to never have it stop? So that would be the challenge uh, on our part. So there's really two ideas I can think of, uh, or a few ideas, but a few I'm going to explore in this video. One is to reinforce this so you have more reference sites and more word of mouth in the beginning so you can go up that growth curve faster. Uh, so that's one idea. And then the second idea would be... Um, you know, to, to deal with the saturation. So maybe expand into new markets that haven't seen your product before or, or expand into new countries or new demographics or new market, market segments so you're sort of outrunning the saturation problem. So that's the question. What would be better? Is it be better to invest in a word of mouth program, uh, reference site program, white papers, uh, webinars, things like that? Or would it be better to invest in market expansion um, to, uh, to avoid the saturation. Which loop should we focus on? So I put together a little model to test out, uh, test out the answer to this question. So if you recall, there's four tools to system dynamics. I have them on my board uh, over there. Um, the first is the cause loop diagram, which we just saw with the two loops. The second is the behavior over time diagram, so that S-shaped growth uh, curve. The third is the stock and flow diagram, which you need to do before you actually do it in a model. Uh, and then there's the actual uh, model. So let's do the stock and flow diagram next. Basically, you have two stocks. Your customers are a stock. Um, and uh, that increases by word of mouth, driving demand, driving buying of your product. So you get more customers. Your available customers is a stock. And that gets drained by the buying. So that's why it's a balancing loop here. And then lastly, I added adjacency. So adding adjacent markets adds to your available market. So that's basically the model we're going to walk, uh, walk through. Okay, here's the specifics. We have uh, 10,000 potential customers. Um, they adopt slowly at first, but positive word of mouth drives that adoption. Uh, the increasing adoption rate, which is good, uh, is multiplied by an ever-decreasing availability of customers. Um, to just uh, compare the models, I made up a, uh, a customer payment rate, so they pay you $10,000 per year. And basically, you have $5 million to invest in each year. You can either invest it in a word-of-mouth program, uh, so a mar more marketing, white papers, things like that, or you can invest it in a market expansion program, so more distributors, uh, localizing your product, things like that to get into more markets. So what will give you the most revenue over the long term? Which of these strategies? So let's take a look. So here's our base case. In the base case, this $10,000 per year per customer gives you a total cumulative revenue over this curve of $450 million. Obviously small in the beginning and large, uh, large in the end. Okay, so now we're going to compare what if you invested more in word of mouth programs. Um, what will happen is uh, this is your base case, and this is the more word of mouth. So you can see that you run up the growth curve much faster. So in a sense, the S moves to the left, but it's still an S. So you still run into the market, uh, market saturation. You just move up the curve a lot faster, which is 
extremely important in, uh, uh, in a business. So, um, so the result of this one is that uh, the uh, more, more word of mouth gives you 613 million uh, over this time period. And so that's 36% improvement, which is a huge improvement over, uh, over your base case. So investing in more word of mouth, more talkers um, in my uh, model is, uh, is a great strategy. So, um, so then, uh, then I did the other option, which is to invest in more markets. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Uh, you have uh, the base case. You have the more talkers, which is the blue. Uh, and then this one is the adding, uh, adding more markets. So you can see the adding more markets has little impact in the beginning. Uh, and, then, uh, and then takes over having a big impact in the, uh, in the end. So, so this is a great, uh, great strategy as well um, to invest in these markets, especially in the latter phases of this thing where, where that um, saturation really has an impact. So the net result was the more markets actually 586 million, so it's a 30% improvement. So it turns out um, that the more word of mouth is actually a better strategy uh, over this 10 year uh, ten-year period, uh, because you get the growth earlier, you get all this extra revenue uh, in these uh, in these uh, years compared to the other options. Of course, in the end, if I ran this out 15, 20 years, more markets would probably be probably be better, uh, because in the end, you sort of end at a higher number of customers. So there's one other idea we can think of, which is what about a combination? So I think it might be logical to in the early years focus here. We saw how that really helped the early years. And then the later years focus here, expanding your markets. That really helped the later years, if you recall. So what I did is I modeled a combination where the first four years I invested here, and then years five through 10 in the model I invested here to see what that would look like. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So for the first four years, basically, um, this, it's a black line, but it's right on top of the blue line. So the word of mouth and the original word of mouth um, is the same because the first four years you're focusing on kind of this word of mouth. Then, um, actually, let me just, I'll build the whole thing. And then what happens, this black line um, is, the, is the new model. So word of mouth in the beginning and then market expansion. So you slow down a little bit um, relative to the... Uh, the pure word of mouth because you're starting to f invest in adjacent markets. And you can see that it, um, it performs better than the base model, performs better than just word of mouth, um, and uh, in the long run ends less than the adjacent uh, markets. But let's see in combination how it did. So it actually did the best. It's 635 million because you move up the curve quickly and then you keep up that growth going. So it's actually the best model for this 10-year period and the best balance, I think, between short-term, which is getting your product off the ground, and long-term, which is expanding uh, your, uh, your market. So you get off the ground early, and then you have an ever-increasing growth rate, or sorry, ever-increasing growth um, for, uh, for the foreseeable future. So that's a great, great combination. It's something I advise our product teams to do, which is in the early days, focus on word of mouth and reference sites and getting established and getting a reputation. And don't worry about adjacent markets just yet because your market is big enough uh, already. And then, uh, you know, the middle, midway through the product cycle, once you get established and once you build up a revenue base, then start to worry about expanding into adjacent uh, markets because that's, that's what's going to be going to be needed. So, um, so that's, uh, that's basically what I say. And a couple other ways to think about this is you, you want to focus on the stronger loop. In the beginning, the word of mouth is the loop that's making the impact. So really optimize that loop. More word of mouth is going to drive up adoption of your product. And in the, the second half of this model, saturation is a stronger loop. That's the thing that's holding you back. So that's what you got to concentrate on in the latter half of the product life cycle is dealing with saturation and expansion and things like things like that. And I think this solution is a good balance. You know, to just focus on the long term without regard to the short term, like you might do with choosing the adjacency uh, model, 
it may not work because sometimes you need that short-term performance. You need that good three or four years to get your product out there to really keep up the investment and support for your product in the long term. So you need the balance. You need that good short-term performance which uh, or early years performance, which the word of mouth will do. And you need that long-run performance um, to, uh, to keep, uh, keep your product growing. And another way I say this is just don't get ahead of yourself. Get your product established, get your reference sites, get your good reputation in the market uh, first, and then start to worry about expanding, uh, expanding in other countries or other, other places. So I hope that was interesting. This is one, uh, one way to deal with the uh, inevitable uh, systems we live in, which is this uh, S-shaped growth uh, type of system. And I hope that was some interesting things to think about at different phases of your product life cycle. All right, thanks.